Imagine a machine that runs forever, a device that, once started, never stops, powering our world without fuel, without sunlight, without end. It's a dream that has captivated geniuses and con artists for over a thousand years. But is it a dream of genius or a fool's errand? This is the fascinating history of humanity's quest to break the universe's most fundamental rules. This is the story of the perpetual motion machine. The obsession began in the Middle Ages with designs like the overbalanced wheel. Inventors proposed a wheel with weights on swinging arms, always heavier on one side, so it would perpetually turn. It seemed perfectly logical on parchment. Another popular idea was the capillary bowl, where water would siphon itself, constantly flowing. These ideas were seductive in an age of manual labor, promising infinite energy from pure geometry. They were the ultimate intellectual puzzle for monks and early engineers. During the Renaissance, even great minds like Leonardo da Vinci were drawn to the problem. But Leonardo, a brilliant experimentalist, quickly saw the flaw. He famously wrote, O oh, you seekers after perpetual motion, how many vain chimeras have you pursued? Go and take your place with the alchemists. Yet, the dream persisted into the 18th and 19th centuries. This was the golden age of the hoax. Charming inventors like Charles Redheffer would demonstrate complex machines with hidden power sources, like a man cranking a handle in a hidden room, to dazzle scientists and swindle fortunes from wealthy investors, including a young Robert Fulton. So why did every single one of these thousands of designs fail? The definitive answer arrived with the laws of thermodynamics in the 19th century. These are not just suggestions, they are the fundamental rules of our universe. The first law is about conservation. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. A machine can't create its own fuel. The second law is even stricter. It's the law of entropy. It states that energy always disperses, moving from a concentrated useful state, like electricity, to a dispersed useless state, like waste heat. Friction, air resistance, and sound are all forms of this energy loss. It's a one-way street. A perpetual motion machine is like trying to unbake a cake. Modern science has closed the case so firmly that the U.S. Patent Office and its counterparts worldwide will not even review applications for a perpetual motion machine. The evidence against it is overwhelming and has been for over a century. But this impossible dream has driven us to create the next best thing. Scientists now work on ultra-efficient systems that harness vast existing energy flows. Think of solar panels capturing the sun's energy for billions of years, or geothermal power tapping into the Earth's immense internal heat. These aren't perpetual, but they are revolutionary. So is any perpetual motion possible? In the near-perfect vacuum of space, the motion of planets and electrons can seem perpetual because there's almost no friction to slow them. Satellites can orbit for decades with only tiny boosts. But they are still losing tiny amounts of energy and are part of a larger gravitational system. They are not creating energy. They are gracefully spending an immense inheritance of momentum given to them by cosmic events long ago. In the end, the thousand-year quest for perpetual motion was never truly about building a machine. It was a testament to our boundless curiosity and our refusal to accept limits. While we failed to create infinite energy, we succeeded beyond measure. We were forced to discover the fundamental laws that govern our reality. And in that glorious failure, we found something even more valuable a deeper, truer understanding of the universe itself. <laughs>